New Zealand here, we have no predators. They were introduced for sporting purposes only by, I guess, the wealthy out of Scotland and England. And um, yeah, they've been protected for the first 40 or 50 years, and then all of a sudden, there's uh, no protection uh, on them. But by then, they'd already taken over vast areas of our, of our uninhabited mountain country in the South Island here. And, um, you know, by then, they were sort of getting out of control, coming up towards the, well, the First World War and the Second World War in the 1930s. They were in plague proportions in, in, in some parts of the country, including a lot of the high country in, um, in uh, Otago and Canterbury. The helicopters and the control of deer is critical. If we didn't have helicopters controlling the numbers of deer, that place would just be overrun with deer because of the sheer nature of the country. It's steep, no foot hunter can get into it. A helicopter can just go straight around a, a row of mountains in 10 minutes where it'll take hunters days and days and days to go around there. And we can just take all the deer off the tops that are there in no time, quickly and cleanly. And uh, that's the idea of it, is to get the deer out of field and reduce the numbers of deer in field, which they have been significantly reduced thanks to helicopters. People curse helicopters, but believe me, they are a blessing. If we didn't have helicopters, that place would be overrun with deer now. Even after all these years, I still get a buzz of getting out here very early in the morning while it's still half dark and flying over the distant mountains, just as the sun comes up. And what I do in the morning when I get up, I get, we uh, look at the weather map these days, we can look up a, uh, a computer one that's done through... Uh, uh, through the internet and uh, find out just exactly what it is doing in various locations like Pusica Point and um, Milford Sound, what the weather's actually up to, whether it's raining or blowing or northwest or whatever it's doing. And if it's good, I phone Jeff up and uh, give him about half frequency an hour to get organised, see him down the hangar, and uh, I've always prepared, pre prepared the helicopter the day before. <laughs> we do, we, we um, try and get deer out in an open area, if it's on a flat area or if it's on the side of a mountain, we try and sort of work them away from the bush because they always want to get back to the bush because you know they've had generations of being shot at and they're usually brought up by their parent or the, their, you know, the, the, their parent deer to be wary when you hear helicopters, you know, you've got to run down to the bush. So the idea is to try and get between them and the bush and, and, and coach them a little bit further out. Well, when I shoot, when we come onto some deer, I've got to try and shoot them in the head and neck. There's less damage that way, and also it's cleaner and quicker on the deer. And once we shoot them, I have to get then get out and hook them on. And um, you've got to be very careful doing that because you're going down into a country that's got trees and rocks and you've always got to watch the tail rotor. The tail rotor is, a, is the weak spot of any helicopter. If you want to get into any trouble, it's the tail rotor will get you into it. Because the pilot can't see where that tail rotor is. So I'm an extension of the pilot's eyes. I'm watching the helicopter all the time and the tail rotor and he's watching me. And I will hook that deer on, I'll put a rope around it and hook hook the strop onto the hook and then I'll climb back in and then we'll go to the next one and we'll, and we'll hook on three or four at a time and we'll take them to a nice flat place where they can be cleaned.
then fly the deer out to Achilla here in Tiania, where they are chilled down and they are then shipped to a factory up near Christchurch for processing and the meat is eventually exported to Germany and then, we, then we'll carry on and get some more. I don't even need to talk to Jeff. Everything's just done by hand signals or nodding your head, basically. And he knows exactly, um, he, he knows how I think and I know how he thinks. So we, we actually work in a pretty good team because I've sort of been working with Jeff off and on for close to 40 odd years, you know. So, and we, we both enjoy doing it because it's, uh, you know, we're both older now, I guess. And, and uh, in fact, we're, a lot of people have retired at, at, at my age. and. Uh, and sort of giving up the ghost, but I, I just enjoy the challenge out there. And uh, he's watching me, and I'm watching the helicopter, and we're signalling each other all the time. And we, I know exactly now what the pilot wants after all these years of working with the pilot. I even know, I got to a stage, I know what the pilot wants even before the pilot knows what he wants. I know what he's going to say to me even before he says it. And we don't talk anyway, it's all in hand signals, and so we've got our wee language in the machine. When I shoot them, when I get down to shoot them, I've also got to tag them, put tags in them, and I've got to GPS them. And that way the deer can, if there's any problems with the deer in the, at the factory, they can trace the deer right back to where it was shot. Not that there's been any problem, hopefully there won't be, there shouldn't be. It's a beautiful clean green. It's all organic out there. There's no, nothing out there but fresh air. And we'll put them on a nice flat, easy place where I can clean them and tidy them up, take the pluck out, which is the paunch, and all gutting has to be done to exacting standards. You cannot, it's just got to be just like it's in a surgery. We have to sit an exam, we have to sit an exam, we have to have a license to gut. Most accidents are a combination of, of several factors. You, you have an option to stop and, and to go home, and uh, I've always done that, you know. And, and all my life, I've done that. I've always been, I've always had a fair element of caution in, in what I do, you know. Working in helicopters and field and does have its dangers. We all have a lot of friends that aren't here with us today. My very best friend was killed in a helicopter crash. Several of my best friends, my very best friend, my best man at my wedding. He was killed in a helicopter accident. But as time goes on, the machinery's got a lot better and the pilots are a lot better. Uh, Dix, he, he, he's done thousands and thousands of hours. He's not a cowboy. So we all sort of got out of that stage and we come out of it alive, fortunately. And, uh, and it is, that does have its dangers. I could name probably 20 different people who have been killed in helicopters. And I've been to, in the old days, I used to go to a lot of funerals. But we just stuck at it because I loved it. And I always had this feeling it would never happen to me.
I shoot them, I've got to remember where they go. They might roll over by that rock over there or that dead tree. And I've got to remember it because remember, there could be a dead tree, hundreds of dead trees and hundreds of rocks. And there could be more deer running away. So the pilot's looking and I'm looking. I, I, watch where, I try and watch where that deer rolls, where it stops. And Dick will be coming around and positioning me onto other deer. And I've got to try and shoot them in flat places because if they roll away down the hill, they get smashed up. Personally, I, I just remember, I, I, I'm able to remember up to about eight or ten without, with, and over, might be over a ten kilometre distance. I go straight back to exactly where it was, you know, and, and just by visual uh, contact, basically. But most of them don't land on open country where they're easy to see. A lot of them, when, they, when they're shot, they roll down a hill and they'll, be, and they'll fall under some vegetation. I'm not a cold-hearted killer. I do it because it's necessary. It has to be done. Believe it or not, deer do uh, are a very, very damaging animal. Even now, you can see the trails going through the tussocks and out into the rocks. You can see the trails going across Charlotte of years gone by, of hundreds and hundreds of deer being coming out of the bush to feed. With the helicopter thing, um, 